Now, back to our special tribute to John Pierce on 873 2GB. It had always been John's burning ambition to work for what he considered to be Australia's greatest radio station. That ambition was soon to be realised. In the form of 2GB program manager and John Pearce fan, Perce Campbell. I first heard John Pearce on Tasmanian radio and uh, I didn't go to Tasmania. I was over there for, uh, for another reason but I happened to be listening to, to Tasmanian radio at the time I was there. Uh, around, around the various uh, stations and I heard John Pierce and uh, he impressed me to be a man of great radio talent and I thought I'd like to see the day that he came to 2GB uh, back in Sydney. Former 2GB manager Ted Harris recalls. John became one of the most prominent broadcasting personalities and he was an integral part of the 2GB team that dominated commercial broadcasting for a very long period of time. That team included people like Andrea, Eric Baum, Gordon Chater, Gwen Plum, John Deese, Terry Deer, Alan Toohey, Bob Dyer, and the great Jack Davy. What a thing for the baby. <laughs> washing machine. Oh, look, I've wanted one for ages, so I get the person. You're talking about the baby or the washing machine? <laughs> Now, we'll play yes, no for one minute. I'll talk to you. And don't say yes or no. Dodge those two words. You ready? Dodge yes or no. Here, here's the buzzer. All right. Full name? Louis Satchmo Armstrong. Satchmo? Yeah. I, as a young bloke, when I came up from Hobart, uh, one of the most exciting things I ever did was, was actually do some commercials and an introduction on a few Jack Davy shows. They were, they were just wonderful. He was a man who was vastly admired. I don't know how many friends he had. He did his own audience warm-ups, and they were the best audience warm-ups. I've just They must have been the best in the world. He was actually known to do four shows in a day. He would do two in the lunch hour and two in the evening sometimes. Gwen Plum recalls how a young John Pierce became an entrepreneur and record producer while involved in her program Pussy and Charlie, which also featured the irreverent Gordon Chater. John was sitting in the... Um in the room alongside the uh, the studio with a pen and paper because we had lived everything and we went for an hour and he had to cut out any naughty things we were like a couple of naughty kids and he had to cut out anything that was a bit too hot in those days it's extraordinary what you can get in but early in the morning i mean look at us this morning at seven what was it seven thirty we opened a laundromat I declare this laundromat open at 348 Military Road. They're going to call one machine, Pussy, and one Charlie. I bet Charlie breaks down every two minutes. Yes, I bet you want to put your dirty linen into Charlie. Oh, I'm wearing it. But what he did do, which was wonderful for us, is he got together a lot of the tapes, cut pieces out, and he brought out a record, the Pussy and Charlie record. And that was a great hit. I've still got a copy somewhere. I think it's on a 78. But... Um, it was good to remember some of the things that, that we laughed at. I had three, I think it was three, rather more than three, very happy years at 2GB. And Gordon Chater. Three years of daily radio and meeting somebody every day like John. Well, um, uh, they've got to be uh, pretty good to put up with me for all that time, and he was. He had a wonderful voice. He had a good command of what he was doing. He was a producer for Gwenny and I, Pussy and Charlie as we were called, and uh, we were sometimes uncontrollable and he would be very calm when we got uh, hysterical, which we often did. I mean, we laughed so much and uh, we laughed at everything and even probably embarrassed some of our guests or anything, but John never lost his temper with me and I... He's about one of the few people in my life who never did. His old mate Brian Chasling confirms John's enterprising nature and endearing personality. One of the first broadcasts that John did when he came up from Tasmania was to join me in broadcasting the GPS regatta. And in those days the GPS regatta was a very big sporting event. It doesn't have the same prominence today, but in those days you'd have 10 or 15,000 people going to uh, the Nepean River to see the boat race. And uh, 
It was John's job to broadcast the first quarter mile of the one and a half mile race. It was my job to broadcast the rest of it. Well, uh, I couldn't see the crews until they reached about the mile point, so John and I conceived the idea that we'd have eight coloured pieces of cardboard on which the various schools' colours would be represented, and John Pierce would hold up the particular piece of cardboard uh, representing the colours of the school that was in front, and then the one that was second, and the one that was third, and that's how I would broadcast the GPS regatta for most of the race. Next, a little abuse, and John Pierce creates a whole new era in radio. But he got really cranky and did his lolly with the listeners. Absolute rubbish. Do you really run a business and you're as stupid as this? You're listening to a special tribute to John Pierce on 873 2GB.